prices of the season now. Like up to 60% off sandals, bags, hats, and summer essentials he needs now. Plus small appliances, $24.99 and under. Get it faster with curbside pickup at Macy's. Okay, everyone, our mission is complete balanced nutrition. Together, we provide nutrients to support immune, muscle, bone, and heart health. Yay! Ensure with 25 vitamins and minerals. Enter the $10,000 Nourishing Moments giveaway. Monday on ET. ET will see you in Nashville. We're kicking off Nashville week with L. King and Inside Dirk's Bentley's tour rehearsal. A lot of dance moves, spins, hip thrusts. Ooh! Make sure you check that out. We have one more thing to show you before we leave. Good night, everybody. Take care. Hello, everyone. Happening now. We're on verdict watch in the Mark Howerton murder retrial. All day, the jury in deliberations. We're live at the Justice Center with the latest. I'm watching the radar closely for storm development in parts of our area. I'll break that down for you and then give you an update on storm chances for the weekend and beyond. And did you buy a thing called a fire extinguisher ball on Amazon? If you did, don't use it. Safety regulators with a warning tonight. We've also got recalls from kids scooters to juicers. The news at five starts right now. And happening just within the last eight minutes, the jury in the Howerton murder retrial has reached a verdict not guilty of murder, but he is not off the hook. The decision read in the courtroom about 10 minutes before five o'clock. This was after about five hours of deliberations. It is the second time that Mark Howerton has had his fate in the hands of a jury, but now he's got a verdict this time. Erica Hernandez at the courthouse since the trial began two weeks ago. She's been there all afternoon and she joins us now live. Erica. Ursula, it's been, it was over five hours that we had to wait, but there is a verdict. Like you just said, Steve, it was a not guilty on murder, but it was guilty on the lesser charge of aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. A lot of reaction in the quorum. When we just saw uh, Mandati's friends and family leaving in tears. We weren't sure if those were happy tears, if those were tears of, of being upset. We weren't able to talk to them. They were ushered quickly away from us here out side of the courtroom. Now this all taking place in the 144th District Court. Again, that verdict was just read about 10 minutes ago. Right now we are waiting for the prosecutor and the defense attorney to come out so we can talk to them about this verdict and get more reaction on this case. It's one we've been covering for two weeks. Again, we heard over 20 witnesses. Our cameras were not allowed inside this courtroom during this trial, but we've been in here every day telling you what's been going on. We heard all kinds of evidence. The defense putting two expert witnesses up in the last two days. Again, after more than five hours of deliberation, Mark Howerton was found not guilty of murder, but guilty of the lesser charge, aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. We, we are hearing that the attorneys could be coming out just soon, so I'm gonna to toss back to you guys, Steve and Ursula, so we can get their reaction. All right, thank you, Erica. Again, Kaylee Mandati, a Trinity University student, a cheerleader at Trinity. She and Mark Howerton had some sort of a relationship, and that is she ended up at a hospital and eventually died. He was found not guilty of murder, guilty of aggravated assault. Of course, we'll continue to follow that story. Yeah, and of course, we'll find out more at 6 and at 10 o'clock as to what testimony probably made the difference in that not guilty verdict of murder. More coming up at six. A five-year-old boy shot along with three other victims in a drive-by shooting this afternoon. It would happen at an apartment complex off of Eisenhower and Raybon Drive. Yeah, that's where we find our John Paul Barajas. John Paul, the suspects in this case have not been caught. They're still on the loose at this hour. Is that correct? Steve, Ursula, that's correct. We'll get a, a little bit more information on the suspect in a second. Right here, the scene is still active, but it is wrapping up. Officers are picking up a leftover debris. Uh, there was evidence markers there. And it looks like one of those men is holding an oxygen mask or a, a breathing tube that presumably was used on one of the victims. Now back to the suspects. They're looking for four of them. They have vehicle information, they tell us, but they want to verify the car that was used was not stolen before releasing that information to us. They also say that this was a targeted incident, but they do 
do not know of the motive. Now, Police Chief William McManus tells us the four victims are a five-year-old, 15 and 16-year-old boys, as well as a 60-year-old woman. Their conditions are unknown at this time, but we know the 15-year-old was hit in the arm and all the victims were taken to the hospital. Officers do not know what type of gun was used or how many rounds were shot. The chief adds one of the teens was the believed intended target. I buy shootings are, are always dangerous to not only the, the intended target, but to other people who were, happen to be in the line of fire. And unfortunately, in this case, there were three other people who were in the line of fire. And we spoke to a man off camera who says a 60-year-old woman was actually his mother. He tells us all the victims in this case are either related or family friends and that the 5-year-old is his nephew. He soon took off to the hospital to go check on them. And also on social media about two hours ago, we told you traffic here on Eisenhower near Raybon was backing up. That has since cleared out. And one of the two entrances at the apartment complex here is now open. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Again, those suspects are on the loose. Thank you, John Paul. New at 5, police describe it as a robbery that got out of hand. A 27-year-old man now charged with capital murder after a shooting that left a man dead. Anthony Guzman was arrested for his alleged part in the deadly shooting that happened last Saturday night at a car wash in the 2900 block of Commercial Avenue near Cantrell Drive on the south side. According to an arrest affidavit, a witness told police Guzman tried to take 54-year-old Vicente Zarita's truck while another suspect tried to take Zarita's money. Other witnesses say they heard gunshots, saw Guzman and the other suspect running away from the scene. Zarita was shot multiple times and died from his injuries. Guzman arrested yesterday without incident. An act of kindness turning into the fight of a woman's life at a local gym, but she turned the tables on her alleged attacker, taking the weapon from him and causing him to run away from her. Police say the accused attacker is 18-year-old Tayon Rodas, who, according to the victim, was seen outside of a fitness center, appearing to have trouble with his key card and couldn't get in. The gym was inside an apartment complex on Dart Brook in the medical center. According to police, the woman told detectives she was working out there. She tried to help by letting him inside, but that act of common courtesy met with violence. When she let him in, she turned her back, and that is when the suspect put his arm around her neck, held a knife to her. The arrest affidavit says that Brodus told her not to put up a fight, but she did. Police say she pushed the suspect off of her, then grabbed the knife. Through surveillance video, detectives were able to track Brodus down in less than 24 hours. We had a very rainy month of May, two days into the month of June. Rain chances picking up for a lot of our viewing area. Yeah, Adam Kasky on the lookout for storms. Yeah, and we have some just outside of the KSAT 12 viewing area. We're talking just northwest of Valverde County. This is closer to Ozona, between Fort Stockton and Ozona, just south of I-10 there. And this is pushing to the east-southeast. And what we're going to watch with this is for it to get steered southward into Valverde County and parts of the Edwards Plateau and, of course, the Hill Country as we go forward the rest of this evening. But you look at, get rid of the lightning, and you can see the intensity of this storm with the reds and even the blacks and purple probably some baseball size hail within this thunderstorm and it does have an active tornado warning just outside of the case at 12 viewing area. So there is the tornadic potential with a few supercells as we go through the evening west of San Antonio. There's San Antonio on the east on the right side of your screen. Locations to the west that, in, that includes Lakey, Rock Springs, even Brackettville, Uvalde, Del Rio as well. Comstock, you are under a tornado watch until 11 p.m. because conditions are favorable for a supercell to move in and potentially spill, spin up a tornado. That's west of San Antonio. We could get some leftovers of that later on tonight and into the early morning hours. There's a 20% chance at midnight for some of the remnant showers and rumbles of thunder later tonight. We'll talk more about our storm chances through the weekend and Tropical Storm Arlene in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. A debt ceiling crisis averted. President Joe Biden will be speaking directly to the American people this evening from the Oval Office after Congress passed a bipartisan budget agreement that's averted crossing the debt ceiling limit until 2025. The deal, though, coming with a lot of friction from the far right and the far left. But top congressional leaders say they are pleased that the government will be able to pay its bills on time now. ABC's M. Wynn with reaction to this controversial vote in Washington. 
Tonight, President Joe Biden is poised to make a rare address to the nation from the Oval Office after Congress voted for the bipartisan compromise brokered with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to suspend the debt ceiling until 2025. The bill is passed. The legislation aimed at averting a U.S. default soared through the Senate last night with 46 Democrats and 17 Republicans sending the bill to the president's desk. Think about all those important pieces of legislation that's going to make sure that we continue to grow an economy from the bottom up the middle out. Those are the things that the president was able to protect. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer pointing to how more Democrats supported the deal than Republicans in both the House and Senate. Because of the good work of President Biden, as well as Democrats in the House and Democrats in the Senate, we are not defaulting. The agreement is projected to cut the federal deficit by about $1.5 trillion over the next 10 years, an estimation top Republicans are celebrating. Don't mistake it that it's the solution. It's the beginning. Passage came with fierce resistance, hardline Republicans wanting more budget cuts paired with higher defense spending. Progressive Democrats argued the president should never have negotiated to begin with. Now there are growing calls from the left to do away with the debt ceiling by invoking the 14th Amendment, which says in part, the validity of the public debt shall not be questioned. Using the 14th Amendment would allow the United States to continue to pay its bills on time and prevent devastating cuts to some of the most vulnerable people in this country. As this legislation heads to the president's desk, the major credit rating agency Fitch says the U.S. is still at risk of a credit rating downgrade. In 2011, the U.S.'s credit rating was downgraded even after a debt ceiling deal was signed. M1, ABC News, Washington. Some big medical news for women. A simple hysterectomy could be the best way to treat cervical cancer. This the results of a new study presented by the American Society of Clinical Oncology at their conference. Up till now, radical hysterectomy was the traditional treatment for cervical cancer for women at low risk of progression. This new study showing that patients with the simpler surgery had fewer complications and a better quality of life. And they seem to remain as cancer-free as those who had the radical surgery. And again, fewer complications and a better outcome. Also presented at that same conference, results of a new trial found that drug, the drug Kiskali could be used to help keep early stage patients with the most common kinds of breast cancer, HR plus HER2 negative, cancer-free for the rest of their lives. Results show Kiskali actually cut the risk of cancer from coming back. The gold standard trial done by drug maker Novartis on a broad population of 4,000 early stage breast cancer patients. When Kiskali was added to endocrine therapy, it reduced the risk of reoccurrence by 25% and more than 90% of patients were cancer free after three years. Oncologists say the findings are exciting, but more research is needed. Looking outside with Trans Guide cameras, your traffic authority, it's going to be kind of a slow drive home tonight at 281 and Loop 410 over by North Star Mall where all of those uh, uh, feeder ramps come in from the north and the south of 281. Uh, not much of a backup on those ramps, but down below, take a look. It's going to be slow going. Coming up after the break, the several items designed to make your life easier when it comes to home could be putting you and your family at risk. We've got some very important recalls to tell you about. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today. Texas lawmakers following in the steps of Florida as diversity, equity and inclusion programs at public universities across our state face the possibility of a shutdown. The repercussions of this removal and what it could mean for thousands of students. Plus, a historic VFW post along the Riverwalk has been held together by years of patchwork. Coming up, we'll tell you how local officials and veterans are trying to take steps to preserve it and all that history it contains. That and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Don't buy them, don't use them. That's the warning from safety regulators talking about fire extinguisher balls that were sold on a right. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We're watching a great big old storm over in the Ozuna area. Is it moving closer? 
Well, it's starting to creep closer to the KSAT 12 viewing area, not quite here yet, and that would be starting in Valverde County, northwestern Valverde County. So it's just off to the west of us right now. And I want to start with the big picture, then we'll hone in on that storm and talk about what the likelihood is as we go through the night of more storms developing. So we're watching this action in West Texas far to the west and northwest of us, even up into the panhandle. But the action between Lubbock and San Angelo will watch closely as well. There's a slight chance that some of that could organize a bit more in the coming hours and then the leftovers drop southward. But I think it's more likely that some of these supercells developing just northwest of Del Rio here near Ozona, between Fort Stockton and Ozona, along and south of, of I-10. I think it's more likely that we'll get some of the leftovers of that action. And you look at the higher resolution radar, nothing around San Antonio. We are high and dry, just some fair weather clouds and even some high thin clouds streaming overhead. This is the severe thunderstorm that's lit up. These red and yellow polygons, those are the active Severe thunderstorm warnings in yellow and tornado warnings in red. Notice two sections of this storm just northwest of Pandale here. Two sections of that storm have tornado warnings for Doppler radar indicated a tornado potential with it. It just shows that there's a lot of rotation and there's a potential for a tornado to drop out of it at any time. Luckily, it's in a very rural part of uh, Texas here, just around the Big Bend area, basically. But this right here also likely has some large hail. You look at the 3D view of it and you can see the structure and this is pretty far away from the radar site. But nonetheless, this purple area hail at at least the size of quarters and there is a potential within some of these storms out west this evening for hail up to the size of baseballs. There's that potential with the type of atmosphere that we have. That's why we have that tornado watch out west of San Antonio, Uvalde, Lakey, Rock Springs, Brackettville, Del Rio. You're included in that tornado watch until 11 p.m. I think this is the most likely scenario to transpire. Now keep in mind. These future casts, these high res models, they're a little all over the place, but this is the most likely scenario. We'll see these thunderstorms move their way into Valverde County over the coming hours, clip parts of Edwards County, Kinney County as well, move into Uvalde County and then start to dissipate after sunset. We're cl talking closer to 10, 11 p.m. And this is 11 p.m. here and the leftovers of that storm mainly in the form of some light to moderate rain, potentially making it to San Antonio by midnight. Keep in mind, there is the off chance that it could hold together a bit more than expected, but right now odds favor it really weakening before it would make it here. Hey, Tropical Storm Arlene, barely, barely a tropical storm. It's got winds of 40, um, 40 miles per hour in a small section of that storm just north of the center of the circulation. And guess what? It's going to become a remnant low tomorrow. Weaken very quickly. So just barely meeting the criteria of a tropical storm. So it was given the name Arlene. Otherwise, through the weekend around here, 30% chance. So widely separated pop up showers and thunderstorms. They could come in the afternoon. They could even come in the early morning hours. There's a potential for it all as we'll be watching that West Texas activity for some of the leftovers making it here late night, early morning, even through the weekend. Temperature wise, 90, that was our high temperature today, one degree below average. Right now we're at 86. Dew point is 66, so we have the mugginess. 70 degrees in the morning, 90 tomorrow afternoon. It's gonna look and feel a lot like today with those isolated to widely separated storm chances every day and every night through the weekend and lasting all the way into next week. But high temperatures, a little below average though. Look at that. There's that. Thank you, Adam. All right, not only are they playing for a state title, they are also trying to stay undefeated, Andrew. That's right. Coming into this playoffs, we knew that there were no more series. It's one game playoffs for the rest of the way, and they needed two wins to claim a state title, where they're halfway there. Today, they took on Colleyville Heritage in the state semis. We got the highlights from a great game. Plus, Nuggets take a 1-0 lead in the NBA Finals. We'll break that down next. The undefeated Canyon softball team begins state tournament play this afternoon. Two wins away from a state title. They're facing Colleyville Heritage in the Class 5A semifinals in Austin. And both pitchers brought their A game today, retiring the first 18 batters they faced. We head to the bottom of the fourth. The game scoreless. Harley Vestal drills a leadoff double into left. And the Cougarettes finally put runners on second and third with only one out. But Haley Carmona and Sabrina Cervantes hit back-to-back pop-ups, so we are still scoreless heading into the bottom of the sixth. Canyon gets another chance to break through 
now with two on. Markele Maldonado drills one to right. That gets by the fielder and heads to the wall. Everyone gets the signal to round third and score. Vestal's in. So is Riley Hester. Maldonado tries for an inside the Parker, but she's nabbed at home plate. Doesn't matter. Damage is done. Canyon goes up 2-0, and Carmona slams the door shut in the circle with a strikeout. Canyon takes a hard-fought defensive battle 2-0. So the Cougarettes will play for the Class 5A state title tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. They will face Montgomery Lake Creek, who is 43-1 on the season and won their semifinal this afternoon 9-0. Game one of the NBA Finals went according to plan for the Denver Nuggets. They led by nine after one, 15 at halftime, and cruised to a 104-93 victory at home. Nikola Jokic was the star of the show, posting a triple-double in his NBA Finals debut with a game-high 27 points, 14 assists, and 10 rebounds. It's just one win, but it stopped a recent trend the Heat have enjoyed in these playoffs. Miami went into Milwaukee and won game one. They went into the Garden in New York City and won game one. They won game one up in Boston, so uh, we did not want them coming in here, taking control of the series on our court. We've done a hell of a job all season long of protecting our home court. I don't think we've lost a game at home in the playoffs as of yet. And uh, we know Sunday night is going to be a hell of a challenge, so proud of our guys for going out there and getting the win. Now, the Heat did make things a little interesting in the fourth quarter, but they struggled to hit shots throughout the game, finishing 40% from the field and missing 26 three-pointers. Head coach Eric Spolstra isn't phased by the game one loss, though. That's what you expect. You don't expect it to be easy when you get to this final round. Uh, this is a great challenge. Uh, it's going to require more. Um, we'll get to work and, um, and uh, you know, see what we can do better. Um, what we can do harder, what we can do with more effort, what we can do with more focus. Game two is still in Denver Sunday night at 7. The entire series, of course, live right here on KSAT 12. So the Heat still have another chance to steal home court in this series. Long layoff between game one and two. It tends to happen in the NBA Finals. Yeah, so. yeah. Thank you, Andrew. You got it. We'll be right back. So watching that storm, the severe storm, really, with the potential uh, tornado affecting Sutton and, or I should say, Terrell and Crockett counties right now. We'll watch for that action out west this evening. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you for watching the news. Bye. See you at six.